Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Who's coming into my castle? What's the password? It's me. Who is me? Me. Oh, it's you. Yep, me. And this is the password. Mm, not a not a bad password. Say you're home early. What are you doing here, David? I have been kissing you. I mean, what are you doing besides that here? You would have me do nothing else. David, you love to see me suffer. You came home for a special reason, didn't you? I did not, Mrs. Claudia Sherlock Holmes. Sure you didn't? I was all through at the office, so I came home. No better reason than that. Any objections? Didn't we hear anything from Mr. Tucker? Not a word. You sure? Quite sure. Oh. I'm sorry to disappoint you, darling, but I came home with no ulterior motives, with no message, with no good news. Mr. Tucker did not call. That means that the house is kaput, sold to Mrs. Reed. I don't mind, really. Because I like you to come home without any reason. Then I know you come home only because you like to. But I just don't understand it. No, oh, you meet men like Jared Tucker in business every day. They lead you on, make you think that you're their favorite customer. Then kerplop. I'm glad I'm not in business. You'd be very good at business. I would? What makes you think so? Well, you hate to let anything go. When you want something, you usually manage to get it. You haven't any proof of that. You wanted me, didn't you? Well, that doesn't count. You wanted me to want to. I admit it. On second thought, maybe you wouldn't be so good at business. Why not? Because you wanted the house and you didn't get it. Well, that was different. How? It was just different. I bargained for the brook and I really wanted the brook and I got it. Yes, you got it in a way. If you'd gotten the rest of it. You're really awfully disappointed, aren't you, darling? We'd have won, David, if that Mrs. Reed hadn't outbid us yesterday. Of course we would have. But, say again. If that old Mr. Tucker weren't so greedy and had said yes to us right on the phone, it'd have been all settled before she put her old two cents in. It wasn't two cents. It was the same as our bid, and not including pasture land or the brook on the hill, but... Oh, now, come on, darling. We're not going to mourn about this the rest of our lives, are we? We might. David, aren't you the least little bit upset? Certainly I am. Well, if you're upset, what are you going to do about it? I'm not doing anything about it. Are we going to look for another farm? No. Then it was this farm or no farm at all? Mm, For the present. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Why be sorry? I'm perfectly happy. So was I in the first place. Oh, if Roger hadn't brought the whole thing up. Oh, well, what's the use? As a matter of fact, I'm delighted the whole thing happened. You are? Mm, It's an experience we've shared. And any experience we share, I like. Funny. A few weeks ago, we'd never heard of a farm in Eastbrook. And now, until we have the baby, it's the biggest experience we've had. I love you, David. I know. Me too. You're a nicer person than I am. Only you don't know it. Of course I'm nicer, but why? Because I didn't really want to... Well, who do you think that is? Mama? Well, she wouldn't ring. Whoever is ringing has just rung again. Mm, so I heard. I'll answer, but reluctantly. You don't even have to be polite as far as I'm concerned. Nice to know. Hello. Oh, I'll be polite to you, Roger. Come on in. That's very polite of you. Were you expecting someone to snub? We weren't expecting anybody. Claudia, whoever it was, did you bop him in the eye? You better come out here and bop him yourself. He's bigger than I am. Take off your coat, why don't you, Roger? I don't like the sound of this. First you tell David to come bop me in the eye, and then you tell me to take off my coat. I have no intentions of fighting back. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hello, Roger. Hello. Claudia, you don't want me to bop him, do you? He's taking off his coat. Only in self-defense. I'm putting on my glasses. (laughs) You're safe. I never hit anybody whom I think is stronger than myself. 
Well, that's nice. <clears throat> I'll certainly put my glasses on in that case. Come on in, Roger. We were only talking. Only talking. Why, my dear, talking is the greatest art, the greatest pleasure, and the greatest wonder between husband and wife. <laughs> what do you suppose we were talking about? Now, let me see. You should be able to guess. I don't have to guess. I know. What? Me. In a way, indirectly, a couple of times removed. <laughs> you were talking about the house in Eastbrook. Brilliant, isn't he, David? I'm training him. Thank you. Well... What's the latest news? No news, and I've forgotten the whole I thing. I have, and I'm furious. You've got a fighter in the family, David. I think the acrid smoke of the muskets is tickling Claudia's nose. What muskets, David? And Roger means that you're not going to give up the house so easily. Oh, I've given it up. What else can I do? Mm, I suppose it's all for the best. So David's convinced me. But I want you to know one thing. I'm not as pickled as you two are. When I want something, even if I don't get it, I still want it. Good boy. I'll use any means I can to console myself. I've been inflicting them on Claudia. But I'd give my right hand for that place. I wouldn't be so hasty, David, in committing your trusty right. Now, are you going to bop me when I take my glasses off? My right hand is perfectly safe, and so is your eye. Think so? Mm -hmm. David, give me your right hand. Honestly, nobody's making sense around here today. It's also very clear. Don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You swore by your right hand You that... mean he called? He did. Tucker called? Yes, yes, yes. It was a few minutes after you left the office. I was just putting on well, my hat. Well, what, what did he say? I don't want to hear. You want to hear this. The farm is yours. The farm is... It's... Yours. All you have to do is call him and confirm it. It's ours. That, that, that means that... Tucker said yes. Indeed he did, for 12000 I can't believe it. Why, the tricky old fox. I thought sure he was going to give the place to Mrs. Reed. I think he liked you better, uh, at least Claudia. Roger, what did he take back? What do you mean? Well, Claudia means what does the 12000 include? Everything but the lower meadow, the pasture land on the far side of the hill, half of the cornfield, the mm. walnut tree. Uh, you settled it the other day, I thought. Uh, what about the brook? The brook is yours. You hear that, Claudia? What about the walnut tree? Roger said Tucker kept that for himself. We agree. I will not buy that place without the walnut tree. Now, come on, darling. You're, you're joking, of course. I'm not. <laughs> She's very amusing, isn't she? I'm not amusing. I'm serious. I won't sell the walnut tree. Not for 12000 Call up. Tell it to Tucker. You think I won't? I think you will. Look, darling, I'm perfectly satisfied to call it a deal with or without that tree. David, don't you have any fight? No more, but I have the house and, and enough farmland, and that's plenty for me. For $12,000, an incomplete farm without a walnut tree? I won't let you do it. Well, you shouldn't have won't let me do it sooner. I admit $12,000 is 2000 more than we should spend. Even 10000 is high, but what can we do? Not give in so easily. I'm calling Tucker. David. David, she means it. Oh, what should I do? Should I stop her? She's liable to make Tucker withdraw. Operator, I want Eastbrook 264, ring 3, and my number is Plaza 5, 5597. Ring 3. Now, Claudia, yes, I'll wait. Uh, darling, think it over before you call him. We, we've got the house. It's a matter of principle, David. Well, I know. And that... I've learned all about them from you. Uh, Claudia, Claudia, the whole bargain seems very fair to me. After all, he, he could have given the place to Mrs. Reed. He couldn't have and still brush his teeth. I mean, tooth, and face himself in the mirror in the morning. Well, whatever you say now, Claudia, Hello, don't... Mr. Tucker. Hello, this is Claudia Norton. How's the weather up in Eastbrook? How's the weather? Mm. Fine. Claudia. Well, Mr. Tucker, we got your message. Yes, Well, and... the least you can do is thank him. Claudia. Oh, thank you very much. We're... My husband is thrilled, Mr. Tucker, but th th there's just one thing. I'm afraid we can't buy unless we own the walnut tree. Uh, Claudia, don't sound so firm. You see, my husband is simply mad about walnuts. I'll never eat another walnut as long as I live. And I wouldn't feel right if he had to go on buying them in a store as long as we have a... No, I'm not interested in the lower pasture. It's just the... 11,500 with the lower pasture aid. Well, that's awfully nice David, of you, David, did but... you hear that? Yes. $500 less and the lower pasture more. Now, that's fine, darling. You, you've done wonderfully. Just stop like Yes, that. I understood stop. that, but I, I still want the walnut tree. But, Mr. Tucker, the walnut tree will only make things complicated, like neighbor's apples. I wouldn't blame Tucker, no matter what he did now. Darling, if we lose this place, I'll know who to thank. Yes, Mr. Tucker, I'm still here. Nope, I still haven't changed my mind. But, 
Well, how are we going to know if the chestnuts, I Chestnut. mean, the walnuts that drop on our side of the hill belong to us? Don't you see? We'll always have fights. And you better stop this one now. We won't have fights. Oh, they'll all belong to you. Well, no, that wouldn't do, Mr. Tucker. What? We can have the far side of the hill give you the nuts and get the place for 11000 Grab it, you little fool. Grab David, it. David, get away from the phone or Leave her alone, David. This is getting interesting. Everything plus the pasture and the far side of the hill and $1,000 less. She's out yanking a Yankee. It's marvelous. It's very nice of you, but what about the walnut tree? Oh, you're pleased I appreciate the tree. Well, I'm glad you are, Mr. Tucker, because I appreciate it so much that now I'm not going to give it up. Roger, please mop, mop my forehead. I'm too weak. <laughs> Have you no faith, man? None at all. No, no, no. I, I, I don't want a piece of land across the road. No, no, I... Two no, immovable not, not objects with one irresistible force. No, the walnut. What's that? I can have everything but the walnut tree for $10,000. I have just passed out. Call the doctor. Well, just a minute, please, Mr. Tucker. I'll have to ask my husband. You see, he's the one who likes walnuts. I just like plain nuts. David, what do you think? Should I take it for 10000 Roger, you, you tell her. Take it, Claudia. By all means, grab it! Well, if you think I should... I love you, darling. I worship the ground you walk on, but if you don't, I'll... David, there is nothing to get excited about. Mr. Tucker is perfectly willing. Mr. Tucker? Yes, Mrs. N- Mr. Norton thinks it's all right with him. Ten thousand. Yes. Mm-hmm. What? The original what? Tract. The original tract, David. Thank he- you. Mm. We'll be up tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Tucker, now, about the walnut tree, I... He hung up. Claudia? Claudia, congratulations. My dear, you were marvelous. I was? Well, now it's really all settled. I, I... Good old Tucker. I can't believe it. The place is really ours. Ours, the Nortons. We're going to live there. You and... And Claudia, Claudia, what's the matter? David, the house, I bought it, and all I wanted was the walnut tree. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Even a humdrum gathering takes on a festive air the minute that tray of ice-cold Coke turns up. Here's the gala touch, the friendly touch. Here's the pause that refreshes both hostess and guest, for it's refreshment in the twinkling of an eye. It's as simple as reaching for a bottle and an opener, yet it does worlds to liven up a party. Is there plenty of Coca-Cola frosting in your refrigerator? If not, order a case today. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>